So let's take a look at some of the Dyneema fabrics that I have available. This is the neon green or the day glow green. I have another roll of this stuff so it's not just this small chunk. But obviously pretty bright green. Uh, it's got a nice kind of matte texture to it. And the more it gets crumpled up, at least in my opinion, the cooler it looks. Very long lasting fabric, super durable and highly visible. So that's the neon green. Here is the dark blue. This is the dark blue Dyneema. So you can see it's got a layer of scrim on the back. So just a really thin nylon, I believe. And then this is the exterior. Uh, this is the Dyneema side. You can see it's got a thin layer of Dyneema on the outside. So super lightweight, same kind of crinkly texture once it gets used a bit. Very durable, very lightweight, as all the other Dyneema fabrics. So really nice color. Works really well with the uh, orange liners, I find. Here is a really thin black Dyneema. So this is just non-woven. There's no woven face on it. There's no scrim backing on it. And you can see these marks on it here. This is what makes it a B-grade or just doesn't pass the quality control of the factory. So that's why they send it to us because they couldn't sell it to their normal clients. Uh, very, very thin fabric. You can see through it. You can probably see my hand through there. So you can see the uh, backside of the liner if this is used for a drop liner pack or a drop liner duffel, but super lightweight, probably the most lightweight fabric I've got overall. And uh, looks really nice and same, same deal. Most of these Dynemos, once they get used for a little bit they have this kind of crinkly texture to them which i really like some people say it looks like a garbage bag i don't necessarily agree with that but uh yeah so that's the really thin black dyneema here is basically nearly the same face fabric dyneema but it has a really thin layer of something like nylon on the back side here so that it's not see-through. So you can't see my hand through there, can't see anything. And uh, again, really lightweight layer of denim on the outside, which provides all that abrasion resistance. You know, you can scratch it up, you can try to poke a hole through it. And it's uh, it's pretty burly for how for how light it is. It's, it's super lightweight, makes for a really nice backpack or a duffel bag or a dop kit. And again, with this Dyneema, same thing. It gets this kind of nice patina texture to it once it's been used for a little bit. So that's the non-see-through black Dyneema. I only have a tiny bit of this black Dyneema X-Pack stuff left. This is literally it. So probably by the time you're watching this video, it won't really be an option anymore. Uh, but this is a woven non-woven because on this face there's this scrim and on this side you've got the woven Dyneema. Again with these marks from the factory that make it not a commercially viable item for them. So you can see on this edge where it's not laminated this is just the raw woven Dyneema and then this, uh, this layer on the back which I believe is a sail making layer. So very, very similar to your woven, non-woven, but maybe not technically exactly the same. Here's that woven, non-woven. So on one side, you can see a standard woven zero and 90 uh, fabric weave of this Dyneema fiber. And on the back, there's fibers going in different directions and uh, just provides extra tear resistance, abrasion resistance, this stuff is super burly. So if you do manage to get a tear in it, like you can, that's, that's about as strong as I can pull on something. And if this was a nylon and I cut a little nip into it like that, you could just go whoop, and it would just rip along the, uh, the waft or the whatever. I'm not a fabric scientist, so take all this with a grain of salt. This woven non-woven is probably the most durable uh, for how light it is, it's incredibly burly. 
And again, still gets that nice patina texture to it once it has some use on it. So this is that woven, non-woven Dyneema. Only is in white. I don't have this in any other colors. Here is the bright blue Dyneema. So again, a layer of Dyneema on the outside to make this nice bright blue with a scrim layer on the back just to give it some kind of rigidity or yeah, so really nice color. And again, has these little kind of lines on it, which make it uh, a B grade in their eyes. Me, I think it adds some, some character to it. So really nice color, really visible and very durable. And that's it for the Dyneema. Here is what the Sparta Kevlar looks like in its raw form. So this is Kevlar sandwiched and uh, mylar on either side. So Kevlar by itself is pretty bad with UV degradation, but once it's sandwiched in this stuff, it will last a lot longer. And it's pretty stiff, uh, pretty loud before it gets sewn into something. But once you use it for a little while, and you know, it's very loud to begin with, but once you use it for a little while, it kind of softens up and it looks a little more like this which I kind of like better than just the straight up stiff. So yeah, so there you go. It's already a little bit quieter after crumpling it up. Not the quietest fabric I have, this Sparta Kevlar, but I really like this yellow golden look and uh, it's very durable, fire resistant, fire proof, definitely cut, cut resistant and uh, the abrasion resistance is really high too. So. It's a really good option. And this fabric was made by a different company uh, that was intended to be used as a layer for armored vehicles. So I believe they use this for shrapnel proofing. Um, yeah, so really high performance fabric that didn't quite meet the standards for their military clients or whoever they were making it for. So they sent it to me. Uh, fabric that would otherwise be discarded but still has a lot of potential. All right, that is it for the uh, Dyneema and Sparta Kevlar portion of the materials. Thanks for watching.